A series of powerful solar storms could make the northern lights visible unusually far south. Colorful auroras may be seen overnight in southern Canada, as well as in parts of the northern United States and in parts of Europe. The storm could also cause disruptions to communications over the weekend. Canadian officials say that they're actively monitoring the situation for any changes. For more on what Canadians can expect from tonight's solar storm, we're joined now by Walter Stoddard. He is a researcher and programmer at the Ontario Science Centre. So uh, good to see you. Thanks for being here to explain all of this to us. I'm just I'm going to uh, you know get you to comment on some breaking news here because I just got a push alert that the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration is saying that the storm has reached Earth. Uh, how is this going to affect Earth? Well, that's exciting to hear from Noah. And what's happened really is the sun is kind of, in a way, it's belched out a little bit of material our way. We call it a, a coronal mass ejection, which simply put, a bit of the, the sun's surface has, has blown off. It's coming towards us. Uh, it's reached us just now. And so what that means is it's going to interact with our magnetic field and stimulate the gases in the northern and, and solar hemisphere, you, you get the auroras, the aurora borealis, the aurora australis. And so a little extra aurora activity for us, if, if I'm not mistaken, we're looking at a, a geomagnetic storm on the range, they, they number them from one to five, so we're at a four, which is pretty good. And so all of Canada is basically covered with the range in which you might be able to see the auroras tonight. Okay, so that is beautiful, uh, being able to see the auroras, but there are also some risks involved here. Uh, you know, I mentioned in the intro that it could affect communications. Talk to me a little bit about that. So that's true. And that has to do with the, the fact that where there's electricity, there's magnetism, where there's magnetism, there's electricity. The two can be interchanged. And that's actually how we've been generating power for, for decades. And what that means for our communications, our, our electronics, is that the extra magnetic field, you, you could see some increased voltages. Now, most of our electronics, most of our power systems are capable of handling that. They, they can handle some fluctuation. They're designed in order to not fail. Uh, but you do have some interruption sometimes with radio communication that might be traveling through the atmosphere because you have some, some extra magnetism, extra fields that are passing by. So there, there could be some disruption. There could be some disruption in our GPS. It's hard to say. It's hard to predict but it, it shouldn't be anything that's catastrophic on, on any level. Okay. Probably just some mild uh, interference here and there. Some mild interference here or there with communications, possibly. Uh, hopefully not. Okay, let's go back to the, those lights, though, because, you know, a lot of people are wondering if they will be able to see them across this country. Do we have any kind of gauge in terms of where folks might be able to get the best look? Yes, and in fact, you, you referenced NOAA. They have a, a, a great graphic where they show uh, the coverage that is the potential coverage. And the line actually goes down almost all the way to the, to the bottom of Canada. And in fact, the viewing line is further south. So that means that if the weather permits, if you look out on the, during the, the, the darkest moment of the night, perhaps around midnight, wherever you might be, or midnight, 1 a.m., look up and look north, uh, if you're in the southern part of Canada, if you're in the northern regions, you might be able to just look straight up. But if you look to the north, that's where you'll, you'll see it in the northern uh, horizon. Okay, and selfishly, I'm asking because now I'm interested. I'm going to be up late looking for this. Will the city lights yes. affect your ability to see? I'm in downtown Toronto, obviously. Will city lights be able to uh, kind of drown things out or, or, or no? That's a really good question. Yeah, it is It is likely that you'll have to find the, the darkest place right. you can. Uh, <laughs> the city lights often interfere with, with our viewing of, of the stars, our viewing of, of the northern lights for sure. Uh, if you can get into a dark corner, that would be best. Uh, maybe go a little north of the city, get out of the lights. That, that would be the best for viewing. But it, it depends on how, how bright the lights get. If, if they're bright enough, we might be able to Maybe see something. Uh, if you're lazy, you're not going to get out of the, the city lights. But I do recommend go go for a short drive, get out where it's dark. 
Okay, there you go. That's what I might be doing later tonight. Okay, so I, I have to ask you before I let you go how excited you are about this. And also, when is this expected to happen again? Oh, that's a very good question. So uh, when kind of takes us backwards too. The, the last time that we had a, a storm of this magnitude was in uh, 2005, if I'm not mistaken. And in fact, it was 2003, when the, the last time we saw a, a geomagnetic storm of level five. So the next grade higher, that had some disruption. I, I think there were uh, a few countries that lost power for a little bit of time. We're, we're not looking at anything like that now, but we are entering into a solar maximum. So solar activity is very active right now. So we could be seeing more activity as, as that goes on. Uh, it, although the sun doesn't necessarily follow our schedule, there are times even when it's most quiet that you have a, a ejection of this magnitude and, and you get something spectacular. Science so it's hard to predict, hard to predict. Every <laughs> hard, 11 hard years, to predict. <laughs> every 11 years you get a maximum though. So maybe that's when we look to it next. I feel like I'm getting so many science lessons this year from the eclipse <laughs> to this. Uh, Walter, appreciate the time tonight. That is Walter Stoddard, a researcher and programmer at the Ontario Science Centre.